Hi, good evening everyone. Welcome to another session. Where today we are going to take some macroeconomic questions from the point of view of CUET MA Economics exam. So let us go ahead and let us start our session. Right beta. So look at the first question. The question says the tequila effect indicates. So basically, tequila effect is an effect which refers to the spread of Mexican prices to other countries. So this, this basically came in Mexico and what basically happened is that it currency, it currency was severely affected and it started devaluating. Actually, I should say depreciating. Depreciation is the correct word. Huh. So, currency the currency started falling. And when the currency started falling, all the investors who had invested in this country, they started going out of the country. Why the currency has performed in the country? Why invest in country? You will not invest in a country. So, this is exactly what happened here. Because uh, the currency was depreciating, people started taking out their money and going to other countries. Right. So this, this, all of this spread that we had, this spread was basically called as the tequila effect. So the spread of 1994 Mexican crisis to other countries in Latin America, that basically was called as the tequila effect. I hope this is clear to you. Right, beta? Let us go to the next question. Now going on and moving to the next question. Read the question. Which of the following is correct with respect to IL and LM curve? So let's read the first option. The LM curve slopes upwards to the left or uh, to the right. So beta, what is the LM curve? So this is how we plot the LM curve. What is an LM curve? The LM curve shows equilibrium in the money market, right? So when we equate the demand of money to the supply of money, we go ahead and we get what is called as the LM curve. Now, how do we draw the LM curve? So we draw it as an upward sloping curve, going from the left to the right. So this is my income and this is my interest rate. So the LM curve slopes upwards to the right. This is the correct statement. LM schedule will shift left when the money quantity increases. So no, whenever there is going to be an increase in the quantity of money, the LM curve is going to go ahead and shift to the right, right? So increase in the money supply shifts the LM curve rightwards and not leftwards. So this is incorrect. LM curve schedule uh, gives equilibrium in the money market. Haan, ye toh humne abhi abhi discuss kiya. Ki LM curve money market ka equilibrium show karta hai. So, beta, how will you go ahead and how will you show this equilibrium? Very simple. I will say that this is my supply of money and this should be equal to KY minus HI which is the demand of money. So, the demand of money should be equal to the supply of money. Demand ho gai ye. It is coming out of various reasons like transactional demand for money, speculative demand for money. So, what reasons ki wajah se demand of money aa rahi hai and you have to go ahead and equate it to the supply of money. Take a bit read the next option. IS curve schedule shifts to the left with increase in government expenditure. So, what is the IS curve showing beta? IS curve shows equilibrium in the goods market. So, IS curve kaisa slope karta hai? It slopes downwards, right? And what happens when there is increase in the government expenditure? So increase in government expenditure will shift IS curve to the right. So correct answer should be IS curve shifts to the right. Take a better come to the next option. The IS schedule shifts right when taxes are 
reduced gain criteria. Huh? So it, it shifts right when taxes are uh, reduced. This is correct. So basically, when taxes are reduced, your equilibrium income will increase, right? Your actually your income will increase, holding interest rate constant. So tax ke kam hone pe income badhti hai, to IS kar rightward shift ho jata hai. Or government expenditure ke badhne pe income badhti hai, to IS kar rightward shift ho jata hai. So better when your taxes are reduced or government expenditure are increased, the IS curve will shift to the right. IS curve rightward shift ho jayega. So this is correct. So which are the correct statements we saw in this case? A, C and E. The correct statements are A, C and E. So that's the answer to this question. Right? Okay, better let's go to the next question. Okay, let's look, this, look into the third question now. Two factors of production A and B have same price. They have same price. So better factors of production ka price kaise likhte hai thang? So, so, if my factor of production is labor and capital, then their price will be W and R. If my factor of production is simply A and B, then I can just write as W1 and W2. So, this, this is my factors of production. Now, if you remember, then you should know that it says, a uh, least cost combination of A and B for producing given level of output will be achieved when isocon has low equal to. So try and understand, huh? What is my equilibrium condition? My equilibrium condition says that MRTS should be equal to W1 by W2. That the slope of isocon should be equal to the slope of isocost line. Right, beta? But what is the slope of isocost line? Yaha pe W1 and W2 are equal only. So W1 by W2 will be 1. So beta, from here I will get that MRTS is also 1. Itna to easy hai karna. Now here is what happens. But now my confusion will be between 1 and minus 1. Now this is what you have to try and understand. Our MRTS, it is minus 1 into the slope of isocon. So MRTS is minus 1 into slope of isocon. In other words, MRTS is always, always the absolute value of isocon's slope. So slope ki jab hum positive value lete hai na, Usko MRTS bolte hai. But does not mean that slope is positive. Isocon by itself should be what? It should, it should be downward sloping. Na? So, the slope hota hai of isocon, it should be negative of the MRTS. So, it is going to be minus 1 in this case. So, the answer that I will get in this case will be minus 1. Not 1. That is what is important. Huh? Okay, let's go to the next question later. Let me just erase what I've written. Okay, come to the next question. This is very important from CUET kind of exam point of views and UGC net exam point of view. In this, it is asking you match the following. So, isma apko kya karne? You have to go ahead and you have to tell which economist gave which theory. But other than that, beta, you should also be going ahead and you should also be knowing the chronology. Chronology matlab kya? Ki kaun se economist ne theory kab di thi? So, I have gone ahead and I have just tried to highlight all of that. We will just simply go to that solution now. So, try to read this, huh? But the absolute income hypothesis, it was given by Keynes and it was, it was introduced in the month, in the year between 1929 to 1944. So 1938 may we know that Keynes talked about his uh, general equilibrium model and he talks, talked about his general theory, he talked about his book, right? 
So absolute income hypothesis is the first hypothesis that came and it was given by Keynes. But the second hypothesis that we want to talk about is called relative income hypothesis. And this was given by Dusenberry and it came in 1948. The third hypothesis we want to talk about is called a life cycle hypothesis. And this life cycle hypothesis was given by Modiglani. Se. Modiglani ne. So Modiglani gave the life cycle hypothesis and when did it come? It came in 1950. At last, you have the permanent income hypothesis. So permanent income hypothesis 1957 mein thi, and it was given by Friedman. Right? So if you are supposed to go ahead and give the chronology, if you have an example in which order mein hypothesis introduced ki gai thi. so you will go ahead and say absolute, relative, life cycle followed by permanent. Kabhi exam mein ye puchhenge kis ne introduce ki aur kabhi kabhi ye puchhenge ki kis order mein ye hypothesis aai. So you should be aware about both these kind of questions. Right beta? Okay, let's go to the next one. So, these questions are very often in exam. There are two questions. Aenge. One is basically called where you have to go ahead and you have to tell that the reason is the assertion of the reason is not the reason. So, you will be given two statements and you will be asked whether statement two is correct reason of statement one or not. That's the first kind of question. The second question in exam is the वो ये आता है that you will be given two statements and you will be asked कि क्या दोनों true हैं, दोनों false हैं, one of them is true or both of them are correct, like that, हाँ, okay, so now I want to go ahead and I want to take this statement, देखो जरा, it says, devaluation always correct chronic balance of payment, chronic मतलब क्या, chronic is something which is going on for years, मतलब बहुत time से चल रहा है balance of payment, so this is saying कि जो devaluation होगा, वो balance of payment को correct कर देगा, उसके deficit को correct कर देगा. Is this true or not? So in this case the answer is false. This is not a correct statement. Why beta? Because we have already known that there is something which is known as the J curve. And this J curve says that there will be a time where your balance of payment deficit will not improve. But it will worsen. जरूरी नहीं है कि BOP हमेशा improve ही हो. BOP worsen भी कर सकता है. So this is that time period where the BOP can go ahead and actually worsen itself. So we have to consider both the aspects. BOP can worsen and BOP can also improve. इन दोनों ही बारे में हमें यहाँ पे सोचना पड़ेगा. So we can't always say that it will improve. Also, you have something which is known as the Marshall Learner Condition. And what do you talk about? That it talks about the elasticity of import and export. And it gives the condition that if elasticity of import export is greater than 1, then will it improve? If it is equal to 1, what will happen? If it is less than 1, what will happen? So, it is not a compulsion that always devaluation will correct chronic BOP. That is not true. Look at the second part, beta. As expected, devaluation leads to speculative capital outflow from the domestic country. This is a true statement. This is correct. This is true. Why? Because, just think about this. See, if there is devaluation of my currency, then I don't want to go ahead and invest in that country. Agar rupees ki value gir rahi hogi, to main yahan pe thodi invest karungi. So I will just pull out the capital from India and invest in some other country. So this is absolutely correct that there is going to be capital outflow from the domestic country. Right, beta? So statement 1 is true and 2 is false. So these are the kind of questions that you can expect in COD from macroeconomics. I will go ahead and meet you again in the next session tomorrow. Till then, keep practicing. Thank you.